In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this image look like this one. So I want to cover how you can affect a specific color channel without going up to select and select color range. You can let Photoshop do the bulk of this kind of work for you. So if I want to change the hue or the color, same thing, of say the yellows in this image. We know that I go up to the hue and saturation adjustment layer and just click it. Now generally, if I were to grab the hue and saturation slider, it shifts all the colors in the image. Remember, we can always click the reset button if you've done something you don't like. It's doing it to the master. It's doing it to everything. So if you come over here and you choose yellows, now it's only going to affect the yellow channel and the edges of everything that would touch the yellow channel. Now watch what happens. So even though there's a little yellow in the brick, it's not shifting it that dramatically. So what I'd like for you to do is shift the color until it's kind of this warm, lighter orange feel, like not super saturated reddish orange, but more of a, of a this color. And then don't want the eyes to bleed. So maybe pull the saturation down a touch and the lightness, maybe bring up just a touch. Again, I'm going to turn off my eyeball. So that's where it was. And actually, I would say that the skin tone was actually contaminated a little bit with the yellow cast. So I actually think this adjustment makes the flesh tone look much, much better. And I love the overall image itself. Now, to make it kind of pull together, I think these red shoes are out of place for me. So what I would do is I'd go to the background layer, and here I would go up to select color range, and then I would normally go select all of this. But what if, let me cancel that. What if I add another hue and saturation adjustment? I go here and choose reds. Let's see what happens. Well, unfortunately, what do we see? There's a lot of red in her skin tone, a lot of red in the bricks, and there's a little red in everything, right? So I have to decide. I can either do this, get the shoe color to match the dress color, and then here, with this mask selected, and I'll click on it so it'll load up here. I'll scroll down until I can see invert to hide everything. Command space bar to turn my cursor into a temporary magnification tool, release the command key, and just hold the space bar so I can click and drag to really fill my screen with what I want to manipulate. And essentially, I want to reveal that new color, and I'm going to do it by painting on this layer mask. I need to paint with white. Currently, black's in my foreground, so I'm going to hit the X key to swap that. I'm going to hit B for the brush tool to activate it. And then if you ever get to a situation where you only see a crosshair with your brush tool, either your caps lock is on, which makes that outer roundness disappear, or my brush is bigger than my image area, which is probably true because I'm zoomed in to 400%. And look how big my brush is, 2200 pixels. I mean, that's giant. So here I would just go quickly drag that down. See, even at 70 pixels, it's pretty big. And then I'm going to paint. And it's okay if I go over onto the brick a little bit because that shouldn't shift too much. Make my brush a little smaller. Ah, I'm painting with 50%. I want to paint with 100%. So I tap zero. You can drag it also to get to 100%. And I'm just going to, it's like coloring in a coloring book. I'm just holding my mouse down, make my brush a little bigger, to paint this a little quicker. I'll go ahead and paint over here. All right, it looks like there's a little bit of red in that brick back there. Make my brush a little smaller. Now here's a quick tip. If you click with the brush and then you hold the shift key and click again and you come down, it's going to draw a straight line or paint a straight line. So that's really good for, for drawing straight lines. Like watch, I'll click here and I'll come all the way down here and click again and see that straight line. I'll come back up, straight line, straight line. You see how that works. I need a straight line right here. So that's a good way to speed up your painting. These curves, you just have to kind of come in manually and do them. Now, if you went too far, hit the X key and come back and fix where you went a little too far. I'm getting a little bit of a halo there. So I'll come back and fix that. Maybe I messed up her skin right here. I'll fix that. See, I'm painting with black to hide what I just painted with white. So all of this looks weird. So I'm going to fix that little halo. Halos are a common problem. I'm going to fix that. Came in too far, so I had the X. So that's why the X key is so handy, because you can flip back and forth. Hit X again. Fix the skin tones. 
looks like I messed up right there. I'll hit X again, come back and try to fix that. Now what I can do is while I'm on this mask is I can feather it a bit. Remember, if you hold down the Alt or Option key, you can see your mask. You can see some of it's good, some of it's not good. So I can feather my mask just a, a tiny bit, just to make it more soft so I don't see my errors. Command zero to fit in screen. Now my shoes match the dress and they match the overall color of the bars, of this kick plate on the door. Now let's turn all that off. And I'm clicking and dragging, which will shut off all eyeballs at once. I mean, this is a nice image, but I definitely believe that this makes your skin tones look, look better. The other ones I think had a definite yellow tint. And I think this really pulls the whole outfit together. It's a really quick way to change all the colors based on a specific color channel. Yes! If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a like it. Okay, so now that I've introduced you a little bit into adjustment layers, let's work with another type of adjustment layer, which would be a black and white adjustment layer. Now this image has a lot of color contrast, right? We have this really warm orange colored Volkswagen against the blue and green background. So it really separates itself and makes it for an interesting image. Now, when you think about black and white, since you've already had some introduction to the hue saturation adjustment layer, so that maybe I can just go to the hue and saturation layer and drag the saturation to negative 100. But notice it's kind of flat now, like it, that now with the color removed, which was giving us a lot of color contrast and complementary colors, this Volkswagen is now just kind of a similar gray as this background. So desaturating an image sometimes is not the best way. And actually I would suggest most times it's not the best way. You lose all control of being able to manipulate the individual colors themselves to affect the local subject color contrast. Because right now, this is it. This is all I can do. I mean, I can go up to my brightness and contrast and add that on top and say, I just need more contrast. But based on where the tones fall in the Volkswagen, it's making the Volkswagen darker. So maybe if I make it brighter, okay, now it's this fender is blending in with this. This is now getting too bright up here. It's still not giving me that effect that I want. So what I'm going to do is hold the shift key and select the other layer and just click the trash can icon. And it's going to say, do you want to delete the selected layers? And I'll say, yes. All right. So then what do we do? This is a perfect time to apply a black and white adjustment layer, which is right here. Now, when you go down the properties panel, it, I mean, it looks very much like the desaturated version, but notice I get all of these control. And remember, you can hover in between the properties panel and that layers panel, get the up and down arrow, and then drag down until you, you're sure you see all the different adjustments. This was orange, wasn't it? Well, it means it's got a little red in it. So if I bring the red slider up, ooh, look at that. Makes it brighter. If I bring it down, it makes it dark. So I have control over just the Volkswagen, which is what I want. So I think I want to make this a bit brighter. Let's see the yellow slider. So that makes it dark also. So red and yellow is an orange. So now I can make that Volkswagen kind of as, as bright as I want pretty easily without having to select it with complicated selections, without having to do a lot of dodging and burning, which are other options and tools that I have. This is a very quick way to control the, the density of the image. Now, what if the greens, which were, I can make those a little darker if I want them to be more of a graphic element where there's not a lot of shadow detail. How about the blues? Now, here's the interesting thing. Watch when I go really far on the blues to crank it down. The blue channel is the shortest wavelength. It's typically starved for light. And you see that whenever you try to make something bright, really dark, it shows you it doesn't have enough pixel information to make that blue sky beautiful all the way across if you do a lot of dramatic editing. So I've got to kind of pull that up until I don't see that. How about the cyan? How far can I pull that down until I start to see it? Do you see all that problem in the sky? That's pretty much bad, unless you're going for a more artistic interpretation and that pixelation, uh, the artifacting, all of this noise problem, posterization problem. If it's an effect you want, then it's okay. But I want my sky to look more like a photorealistic sky. So that's really as dark as I can go with, with this color channel adjustment. So I'm gonna leave it there. Now, based on the other things that I've learned, I would like to make this grass a little lighter. So maybe I'll go ahead and take what I've already learned and I would add a levels adjustment layer and I would say make that grass a little brighter, but maybe with a little bit more black, something like that. Now I'm only looking at this foreground right over here. Remember the rule. This makes every single thing for every layer have that same adjustment. So what I can do is I can grab this adjustment, click on it and drag it down. So now it's only affecting the car itself, not the black and white conversion. But if I want to further reduce this impact, I just need to convert this layer mask to black. Because remember, a white mask reveals, a black mask conceals. I'm going to select this mask, and then I'm going to go to the properties panel and just click the word invert. 
And see that removed, that hid all of this effect. But now I know I can just hit B for the brush, hit D for default colors to switch my foreground background. Ultimately, I just need white in my foreground if I'm painting on a black mask. I'll look at my options bar, make sure I have a normal blend mode. My opacity's set at 40% because that's what I used the last time I used it which is fine for this, I think. And now I can just paint. I'm painting on the mask. You see how it showed up on this mask over here? I'll hold the Alt or Option key and click on the mask. See, that's what it just did. Click on the eyeball. So anything I want lighter, I click and paint, click and paint, just to drive the viewer's eye a little bit, just to give a balance of tones in the image. Maybe I want that door a little lighter. So remember, photography is about subtlety. So any tool you can learn to make your image exactly the way you want it, the responsibility is on you to learn those tools. I hope this has helped. And once you get to this point where you have your favorite black and white, which is exactly where I want you to take this particular image. Imagine if you wanted to make it a sepia toned image, which is like an old timey kind of a warmish brown. Just make sure you're at the very top of all your layers and go up and add a hue saturation adjustment layer. Click colorize in the properties panel and just drag the hue over to somewhere to a really warm brown, like not a yellowy green brown, but more of a orangey brownish brown, and then pull your saturation down. I like mine to be pretty low, somewhere between 10 and 15, because I like it to be real subtle. I think that just looks like a nice old timey photograph. It fits very well with this particular image. Now let's say you had five of these or 500 that you wanted to show on your website or you wanted to put in your Instagram post. The key is you have a certain number of images that you want to look like they're all toned the same way so that one's not too warm, one's not too red, one's not too dark. Let's say I have this wedding image and I want the exact sepia tone I've created here. All you have to do is come over to the right side of the hue saturation name or whatever name you've named this layer and then click with your cursor and drag over. Do you see how my, my hand, my cursor changed into a closed fist? because it's literally holding on to that hue saturation layer. I'm holding my mouse down while I hover over the tab of the other image, and then I'm coming down inside that image and letting go. And notice what it did. It automatically applied the hue saturation layer to the document. It applied the exact same settings I had already applied, and I can do this to any number of images and they will all match. They will all look like they were tinted the same way. I hope you found that to be an interesting tip. If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a lack it. Yes! Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. Huh. Whoa. Yes! <laughs> God. Oh my God, I did. This is hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here. <laughs>